pleased to have here on the Rich Eisen Show a pro football Hall of Famer uh, and one of the best in the business at calling the games on Fox. He's called many Super Bowls. He's actually won Super Bowls, three of them. Uh, and uh, he also was kind enough to send me an influencer's box of his new eight beer, which is great, but bad for the moment because I'm hammered doing this interview <laughs> right now with Troy Aikman. How are you, Troy? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Congrats on the eight uh, thank you. beer, man. Yeah, thank the you. We're light excited lager. about it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's really good. It's really good. Two years in the making. Uh, never thought I'd be making my own beer, but yeah. uh, met my now partners through a mutual friend, and off we went. And wanted to do a light beer, low-cal, low-carb beer. And and what's different about eight is relative to any other light beer on the market is that mm-hmm. we have no adjuncts and no fillers, no corn, no rice, no syrup, no added sugars. And uh, it's an all-malt light beer, and, and yet we're 90 calories and 2.6 carbs, and I don't feel that we sacrificed any flavor. And for a light beer, it you is, know, that's saying something. So I, I refer to it as a better-for-you beer, so okay. you can feel good uh, while you drink it. And it's available where all uh, beers can it's be It's available and uh, just exclusive to Texas okay. right now. It's currently in bars and restaurants, and then in the spring will be in the stores where you can buy a six-pack, 12-pack, take it home. Uh, I hope we're having a conversation at some point about going beyond Texas. That that means that things are going things along are pretty going well. well. Well, I mean, I have had it. It is very good, and I'm not really Thank much. Of a, I'm more of a red wine drinker. Yeah, that's when Charles Woodson hopefully is going to bring some of his stuff later <laughs> I'm on. Sure I'm, he will. I am really going to be hammered by the end of the show. This is going to be fantastic. <laughs> what a day we're having. Beer, beer and liquor never sicker. Fantastic. They said back yeah. in college. I heard that. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's let's talk a little bit of football here. Um, you were the winning quarterback of the last Super Bowl here in Los Angeles, California. Here we go again. Yeah. Um, and uh, you practiced at UCLA just I like did. the Bengals yeah, did, right? Sure did. What was that like for awesome. you, man? It was awesome uh, because as much as you talk about how this game's just like any other game, it's not. It's just simply not. And you know it. You know it as soon as you win the NFC Championship game or the AFC Championship game. And for me, uh, I was in my fourth year and to be able to practice in familiar surroundings at UCLA, there on the practice field, a lot of the support staff that volunteered with the Cowboys that week were people that were there at UCLA with me. Uh, was fantastic, and then we played at the Rose Bowl, uh, which is where I played my college game. So I, I feel like it gave me an advantage from the standpoint of just n- uh, not getting too emotional about the game and too wrapped up in it to where I was just comfortable with what was going on. And and that's a big deal, I think, in a game like this, especially for people handling the ball, the quarterbacks especially. And I've always uh, liked the Super Bowl because I always like to see how those guys – handle the emotion of it. But I think all of that kind of helped me in my preparation leading up to that game. Well, I mean, uh, we had Michael here the other day. Of course you did. We did. We had Michael here the other day. And um, he he was talking about his uh, practice uh, and your practice at UCLA. He said on a Tuesday, um, you practiced, and it was the greatest practice you guys had ever had. Um, and 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 he said this is what he when they that was when they knew that he this was going to happen to the Bills. Go ahead. We gonna spank that ass. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> Did you have a similar sensation? Uh, you might have verbalized it differently. Yeah, I definitely verbalized it differently. I probably was not uh, feeling quite as confident, but uh, we did have a great week. We had a great week of practice, not just one day. It was a it was a great week, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, you just don't know. I mean, you, you, you literally don't know. So I think, go, you know, to circle back to this game that people say, hey, do the Bengals have a chance? Well, yeah, they have a chance. I think any team, when you get to the Super Bowl, has a chance because even if on paper you look at it and you think, I don't know, can the Bengals block up these guys? You know, what about this? What about that? Anything can happen. And you've seen it. I've seen it in a Super Bowl that you just don't know. The unexpected usually does occur. And it's anybody's guess what might happen. Well, you had uh, Bu- uh, Burrow and the Bengals on a on a Thursday night. Yeah, um, just chatting with him um, and getting under the hood. Did you get a sense of the it factor that everybody keeps talking about? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I I watched him, studied him a little bit coming out of college, liked him. Uh, but my, you know, my assessment of him would be what anyone's assessment is. Hey, the guy makes good throws. He handles pressure pretty well. You know, I mean, when you watch film. It's not hard to see who can play and who can't play, but I really think the the differentiator between quarterbacks, there's guys who get, you know, when you take a guy in the first round, it's a flip of a coin as to whether or not that guy's going to go on and 
and become the guy that you hoped that he would when you drafted him. And there's a lot of factors that go into that beyond the player's control, coaching and, of course, good players and all of that. But what the player does control or what he at least possesses, I think, is the intangibles that makes a difference. I really do. Can you find that when you just sit in a room with a guy? Can you... Do you know when you sit in a room with Joe Burrow before he's ever taken an NFL snap that he has that it factor? Uh, I don't know. I've asked I've asked personnel guys that. Mm-hmm. When I talk to these guys, you can usually tell right. You know they've they've already got a resume, so I'm not the one who's drafting them. But with with Burrow, I know when we talked with him, and you see it now in his interviews, he he's got an edge that you know this guy's a uh, he's a competitor. He's a killer uh, as far as how he competes. And uh, I like everything about him. And it's obvious that he galvanizes that team and they love playing for him. And those qualities, I think, are paramount if you're going to be a championship quarterback. And what do you think is going through Stafford's head, Troy Aikman, right now? Thursday before the big game, he's finally, finally. How good is that? The questions about, well, is it Detroit or is it him or is it a combination of both? And now. He could he 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 was zero and three in his playoffs of his entire career. He's three and zero just this playoffs alone. What do you think's going through his temples well, right now? Well, um, I I I know we talked to him week three, I believe it was. They were getting ready to host the Buccaneers, mm-hmm. and I asked him, "Hey, how's it been for you with the Rams?" And he said, "You know," uh, and he loved being with the Lions. Sure. He wanted to turn that program around. You know, he loved his time there. I know. He wished they had had more success. Well, but he put in his time there. He absolutely I mean, did. I mean, and gosh. he said, you know, this is this was week three of this year. He said, right. this is what I always envisioned the NFL being. And it was such a great line. And you think of all the players who, great players, who have been relevated to, you know, basically being on these teams that aren't that good. And mm-hmm. and then for him to come to the Rams and now he's in the Super Bowl, I can only imagine what he's thinking now. If he thought that this is what I always imagined the NFL being week three, how's he feeling now? But enormous pressure on him, as we know, and on this team to get to where they are. And yet here they are. So I've known Matthew a long time. Uh, he, he grew up where I now live in, in Dallas and uh, won a state title there with the high school. But for him to meet all expectations, that just doesn't happen very often. So uh, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of, the, proud of the Rams and what they've been able to do. And maybe they can finish it off. He's played mistake-free He's football awesome. pretty much. I know that. Well, and that... the other part of that, Rich, is I will say that what, you know, there were those things, hey, he hadn't won a playoff game like you alluded to a minute ago. He hasn't beaten his record against teams with 500 records, all, all, all of that stuff. And, and, and it was out there. And if you retire that way, that's the narrative. That's what they're saying about you. And yet now he's, he, he's doing what I was able to do. He's got good players around him, right? Mm-hmm. And, and when you have good players around you and you have good coaching – you tend to beat a lot of those 500 teams, and you tend to win a lot of playoff games, and he's been able to do that, and I've, I've been thrilled to see it happen. For Hall him. of Famer Troy Aikman here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, so I, I'm going to ask the question about the Cowboys, and it, it's an infused way of asking it. Just okay. To, okay, I'm just coming straight through the front door with you. But I think it's an appropriate way to ask is what's missing? What is missing with the Cowboys. Yeah, so that is that is the million dollar question that I get asked and and I honestly don't know. Um there was a time where I thought maybe I did know. Um but I think when you take a year like this for instance and they had a great year and they are as talented as any team in football and as someone who gets a chance to see a lot of these teams because of the Thursday night schedule and the Sunday package that I'd put their roster up against anyone's and they they played great. They didn't play as well down the stretch. but And then you go into the postseason, and you just don't play your best football. But this isn't the first time that that's happened. They've been the number one seed in other years and failed to get out of the first round. And so what is keeping – it's, it's hard to imagine. In, in a league, when you see teams like Cincinnati and like Jacksonville a few years ago – and others that you can point to, and yet for the Cowboys for 25 years, they haven't even made it to an, to an NFC Championship game. It's hard to believe because when you look at their regular season record over the last 10 or 15 years, you know they they're one of the best in the league as far as their winning percentage. So I don't know. I, I really don't know, but I do know this: heartbreaking for that organization and for Jerry Jones to have the team that they had and pretty healthy when they went into the postseason. And not to get out of the first round, um, really defeating. And it makes for a long offseason, 
makes for another long season in 22 because this is a team, fairly or unfairly, they're going to be judged on what they do in the postseason. Well, I mean, again, we have Dak coming in here in about an hour, and you know, clearly he had a remarkable season yeah. based on of the way his previous season ended. But the way the the game ended, it just it just seems like can you can you can you point the finger at the coaching staff? Do you think here, or is it something that's unfair to do because circumstances? Yeah, happen? I think it's unfair. I think that the as far as the last play goes, I mean, there's a lot of opinions on that, of course, and I know that Mike McCarthy has defended the decision, and I don't necessarily disagree with the call. But when you run that play, you 100% have to get off another play into the end zone. Mm -hmm. And when that doesn't happen, for whatever reason, if it was the officiating, if it was the Dak went too far or when he ran, it doesn't matter. In in that sense, then it was a bad call. And, And I think you have to just own up to that. If you don't get a shot into the end zone when you're already in a position to take a shot into the end zone, but, uh, yeah, it's a it's it's uh, it's tough. It's really tough. And I but I don't blame the coaching. I, I think that's the easy out. I think that's what people do. Um, but no, I think overall, I think they're a very well coached team, and uh, just didn't happen for them. Well, I guess, and the good thing is, is that everybody's back on the coaching staff, yeah. right? That yeah. Kellen Moore didn't get a gig, and Dan Quinn was shopping around, and then came back. Yeah. And then uh, I, I don't, you know. There is. You might have missed it while you were uh, making your beer and launching your yeah. lager available in Texas and hopefully everywhere else soon. Um, that there was a. There you go. Right, right. there. Right next to you. Um, that um, <laughs> that there was a uh, an article on DallasCowboys.com of Jerry flat out talking about Dan Quinn coming back and he's head coaching material and Sean Payton was on the staff before and everybody knew at the time that he could be a head coach and Jason Garrett and he's talking about Dan Quinn being head coaching material and well what about Mike McCarthy and his answer was well Mike knows that someday he won't be the Dallas Cowboys head coach <laughs> and it's just or like or does he <laughs> <laughs> now I guess he does you know like what's yeah. up with that you know I mean is that that sounds like I don't understand that one do you yeah I um what's what we do know is this is mm-hmm. that Jerry is really smart you know, I mean, he's a really smart guy. And so I, I, I don't, you know, and at times, as we know, sometimes he'll shoot from the hip. But I think that, you know, in those comments, I think he had time to really reflect and, and know what he wanted to convey and how he wanted to say it. So for that not to, for there not to be more support, there, there, there had to be a, a, a reason behind that. Yeah. Is that to... You know, warm up the seat a little bit, motivate. I, I I don't know, but a little unconventional. It definitely is. There's no question about all that. So, um, what do you think? A few minutes left here with Troy Aikman. Again, eight beer is uh, available in Texas, and is there's eightbeer.com for more information for you to see how you can get it. Um, so, what do you make Troy Aikman of Tom Brady retiring and then six days later on his podcast saying never say never? Oh, I, 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 I think I would have answered it the same way. I don't, I don't make anything of it. I mean, I doubt that Tom's going to come back. Uh, but we have seen him miss an entire offseason before when he was in New England. And then he they went on and I think they won the Super Bowl that year. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not outside the realm for him to maybe come back. But I, I don't think that's his intentions. But I understand that. What do you mean you would say you would have said the same thing? What do you well, mean? I just think that for if somebody's asked, hey, do you think you'll ever come back? Um, I, I do believe in the theory that. Yeah, I think there's always a chance you might do something, you know, so why totally close the door on it, even though in all likelihood you're you're done. I I I would be surprised if Tom came back and played. But I think for him to answer it that way, I I don't think should have, uh, you know, sounded the alarms maybe the the way that it did. I I reached out to him. I've really enjoyed him being with the with the Bucks because with them being in the NFC, I got a chance to see him a lot, got a chance to talk to him a lot and got to know him a lot better than I did. And selfishly, I hate that he retired. And I probably speak for a lot of oh, football yeah. fans out there because he's playing so great. But it is a, it is such a commitment. I mean, forget what he's missed out on with the family because you do miss out on quite a bit. But putting your body through that at 44 years old, I don't think people understand what he had to do during the week in order to get ready to play the next game. It, it's not easy. It was hard for me and I was 34. Now, it was a different game. Guys got hit a little bit differently. But still... At 44, that's that's hard. I mean, really hard. But I was hoping selfishly he'd play another year. 
I knew 45 is what he mentioned that he wanted to play to. And the great year that he had this year, I just figured Tom's a guy who, when he sets goals, he achieves them. I really thought he would come back and play another year. But uh, we all knew it was going to end at some point. But, man, what a – you can't even put in perspective what, what his career has been. Um, there, there needs to be something named after him. I, I don't know what that is. I don't yes. know what it looks like. But there needs to be something significant within the NFL that reflects on what he contributed to our game. Because I really don't think – and, and and I really don't think anyone represented our game better or represented themselves better than Tom Brady. And I've told him that, and I've said it to a lot of people, and I really believe that. Well, I mean, guy won three out of his first four, right? And that's where we're, we're already saying if Burrow wins here, then he's on pace, and we're going to be looking at every kid who comes out. Can he catch Tom? This whole pace, the, that that thing about pace is you know a mm-hmm. little crazy. In week two, they'll say this person's on pace to to you know have <laughs> you know four thousand yards receiving. I, I, I you know pace is a little bit overrated but yeah I, I think that when people start trying to put into perspective somebody at a young age yes. achieving what I, I I don't think I, I know records are made to be broken and all that and we don't think there was going to be another Michael Jordan and maybe there still hasn't been right you know and all that I I can't imagine anyone ever doing what Tom Brady has done because as much as what we're just I just mentioned about on pace, and we heard it last year with Mahomes, right. and if Mahomes beats Brady, then then he's one step closer. You still have to potentially, most likely, win four after turning thirty-seven. And the most remarkable, like you say, how do you put it in perspective? The one way to put it close enough in perspective about Brady is that you and I and all of us are shocked and disappointed of forty-four-year-old retired yeah. because yeah. We're, we're like. Oh my gosh! I mean, the last touchdown happen. pass he threw was over Jalen Ramsey yeah. in an NFC divisional game with a game yeah. on the line, and he needed to throw it. And yes, that's a Hall of Famer he's throwing to in Evans, but it was perfect, and he led the league in everything. He's in everything. amazing in everything, Unreal. and and he, you know, what he proved in Tampa is yes, he had great coaching, and I'm a huge Bill Belichick fan, and how can you not be? And the greatest coach ever, and you know, he had a great support group around him in New England to flourish. But what, when he goes to Tampa and did what he did, it, it really put an exclamation mark on just exactly, if anyone doubted his, his contributions mm-hmm. or could have another quarterback done what he did in New England, the answer is no. I mean, he elevates players around him. He's competitive beyond anything you can imagine. Uh, there's not a guy, this is the remarkable thing, especially as he's gotten older, I don't think there's a guy who's ever shared a locker room with him that doesn't feel like they have a personal relationship with him. And I can tell you, that's hard. It's hard to do. But Tom makes it a priority for him. And he's a great guy. He's a great father. He's a great quarterback. Uh, He just exudes excellence. And I'm really proud of him. Yeah, one way to to tell if somebody played with him is they refer to him as Tommy. You know, yeah. like we, you know, most of us refer to him as Tom. Well, his dad we does him. because his dad, he's Tom Brady. That's he's right. the Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> his dad's so damn proud. Uh, all right, Troy Aikman. So uh, Collins was calling the Super Bowl. You called your first Super Bowls together, right? We With, did. Yeah, in yeah. Jacksonville. We called uh, New England, Philadelphia. Yeah, that, was Joe, first. that was Joe's first. Joe's first, yours. yeah, our third year together. Right. And, uh, and then we've got Fox has two of the next three Super Bowls after this one. Okay. So. All right, very good. Yeah. How many of them are you going to call? Uh, I, uh, well, we'll I, I should know here in another week or two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> will, will we know if eight beer is available on Amazon Prime? That, that that's one way to sell this thing. That know? is one way to sell it. That would that would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? I'm if just, it was available on just Amazon, out there. Yeah, I'll just. You, I like the way you're you're thinking right now. I'm I'm all about the branding. You know? I, me too. Trust me. I, me I, too. I, Can you? Because I saw that. Honestly, you know, and for anybody here, 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 hold on for a second. So uh, when I first got this, I'm like, what are the blue squares for? And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's the holes in the eight. Yes. I'm like, okay. So I, I explain that see? to some people because I'm always afraid. Do I mention it? Do I tell them no, kind of? And, and, and when I sometimes I say, you know, the, the, the logo is really a colon, but on a white can, it then forms yes. the number eight. And they're, yes. and they're like, well, yeah, of course. You know, like I'm an idiot. For, <laughs> like, what else does it, you know, and then, then those times. I say, and they're like, yeah. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. you, you can tell I really tried your beer and liked it because I just flat out said it. Just so you know, the people who haven't tried your beer or really aren't into it, they'll go higher register. Like, yeah, it's a good beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'll go, they'll go up there. That's the They'll say. go higher octave. They'll, go, they'll say, yeah, you, know, yeah, hey. you make a good beer. Yeah. 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 I like you that. Know, so th- that's the way to tell. Okay. I just flat out said, I really like your beer, man. Awesome. And I'm not that much of a beer drinker, but yeah. I really, really like it. I'm proud this. of it. I'm you should proud be. 8beer.com. Everybody check it out. At Troy Aikman on Twitter and Instagram. I follow. You should as well. Great to see you. Thank, Great to see, see you. Enjoy buddy. your time Thank here you. in, in L.A., back here in L.A. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.